lot bigger. That's okay. But we do want to try to get the face to be kind of in proportion with what a face would be. So if you're going right down the center here, it's where the nose is going to line up. The eyes will actually be in the middle of the head. I know it doesn't seem that way, but that is actually where they'll be. And then where the nose is, the mouth will be a little bit lower. So you can kind of see the basic setup of where the facial features will be just by where I marked them. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make little holes for the eyes. And I mean, they're, they're relatively deep. And then I'm going to kind of shape them a little bit. If you look at a skull, you'll notice that the eyes are actually holes, and then you can put the, make little eyeballs to fit in the holes. So I'm just actually going to do that. I think that's gonna to be too much. I'll just go a little smaller, maybe half of that. And again, you're just going to roll the eyes a little bit. And when they seem like they're fairly similar in size and shape, which those two look like they might be, just going to put them right inside the eye socket. I might have to go a little bit bigger on the eyes here. Just roll them around a little bit more to just create space for the eyeballs to fit inside the eye. Let's see, there it goes. All right, nice. Okay, then I'm going to roll out a tiny little shape here that's going to be a little bit more almost like a teardrop. So let me just roll it. Usually if I start with a ball and then go a little bit more stretching out on this side. So now you can see it's a little bit longer and that's going to be my nose. I'm going to sit that right in between the eyes is where it's going to start. And going to just gently roll that whoops, into place. I'm using the, the tool to sort of blend it and roll it at the same time. And then, because I want it to look a little bit more like a nose, I'm going to give it two nostrils. If you can see the nostrils pretty well. And then I'm going to press that into place a little bit more. So I'm just, it's going to take a little while, a little bit of work to just kind of get this formed and shaped. So as I'm pressing the nose into place, it's also shaping the area around the eye. And again, I have those two nostrils, so you can just blend that nose in a little bit better. And because of where the nostrils are, the nose can go up a little here. And then it has that little piece that connects down. So let me see if I can bring this up a little closer to the camera so that you can see this piece here is going to get blended in. And I'm just going to push the nose up a little bit more around here. So you want to just make sure you're, you know, look, even look in the mirror or if there's another person nearby while you're working on this. Look at how their nose is formed. And you, you know, you're going to go back and, and continuously refine this too. So the shape of the nose will vary depending on the, you know, the person. Um, I'm just going to give it a very basic nose right now. And then because it's the storyteller, and if you remember correctly, in um, the storytellers by Helen Cordero that we were looking at, the storytellers have their mouths open because words and breath are coming out. So we're just going to make an open mouth and the mouth is a little bit more exaggerated. And then we can make lips for it if we'd like. So I find, you know, this is where the coils come in nicely. And uh, this particular clay, the Sculpey really holds those coils nicely. So you can even kind of form your lips a little bit just by pressing and you put top lip and then you add the bottom lips and again 
you know, every every detail I make, I'm going to then just kind of blend it into place. If you have other things that you want to use as tools, that's fine. I just happen to have and like this piece of bamboo. And I'm trying to use the tools that you have rather than tools that I normally would have just because I don't want you to feel that you can't achieve the same results that I can achieve. Um, but, you know, so I'm not going to use different tools. Um, now, also, because it looks like it needs one, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a chin. So I'm going to press in here a little bit and separate and, and kind of give that neck a little more definition. All right. And um, if you one thing that you might notice is missing, it needs ears, right? So I'm going to make some ears. And the same way I'm going to do that, I'm just going to roll a little bit of clay and cut a piece here and a piece here. And you can see that they are somewhat ear looking. And when I press them, they become a little bit more, you know, they look almost like little seeds. And if you pick them up and you put them on, you kind of figure out they're going to usually start up at the top of the eye and come down most of the way on the cheek. And again, you really have to be careful to blend them into place so that they stay. And you can use your tools to smooth them out a little bit, blend them into the face. And shape them a little bit so that they look a little bit more like an ear. I'll get the other one on before I finish shaping that one too much. And so I'm just going to attach it to the front of the head first and then flip it over and get the back of the head. You always wanna make sure it's attached front and back because you don't want it to just kind of fall off while you're adding other details. And now you can, you know, you can go back in and do a little bit more for me. I'm now I'm going to just give it some eyelids. All right. So let me do that. And the eyelids really can be just little balls also. Maybe a little bit oval. So I'm going to roll that into a bit of a ball. And whoops. And then flatten it a little bit. So it's slightly oval, slightly oval. But now I'm just going to place it right over, whoops, right over the eye to form an eyelid. And just try to blend it in. And I'm trying to blend it in in a way that you can still see where the eye, you know, socket is. And that the eyeball is inside the socket. So I'm not trying to get rid of that effect. I want to still keep that effect of the eye socket in there, but I also want to blend it and have the eyelid, you know, it is part of the rest of the head and the rest of the skin. So I want it to reflect that. So you can see that looks a little bit more like an eyelid on this side here than the other side now. So now I'm just going to make another one for the other eye and place it on top of the eye. Oops, I forgot to flatten it. Flatten it a little. Now place it on top. Oops, too far. Okay, and then same thing. Just blend it into place a little bit so that you have that eyelid coming in and making it look a little bit more like an eye. Now, whoops, I forgot to form that other ear. Let me just get that other ear sort of formed a little bit better. And a little indentation there. So you want, you want the ears to look as much like ears as you can get them to look. All right, so now I have a little bit more of a person shape going on here for my storyteller. And I might let it sit actually I'm going to do now to myself is sit and so I have now a little bit more of a face a little bit better shape more of a skull little chin the mouth is open 
got eyelids on the eyes, I've got ears. And I think I told you before that my storyteller is going to be based on a friend of mine. So it's, it was based on my friend Sid. And i um, not going to bother with hands yet. I think I'm just going to form these arms. I just want to get them a little bit thinner down here. So I'm just going to pull away a little bit more clay. And so this is about a particular story he was telling that a friend of ours was listening to and the friend was laughing so hard at a really stupid joke that was not at all funny and he was laughing so hard he fell off of his chair and his chair and him both of them went flying off of the porch that we were sitting on so um Sid very often wore baseball hats and my guess is that he was wearing one that night so I'm going to try to form a little bit of a hat for him and try to figure out. I might have to do the hat separately and then add the brim. Uh, so, let me see. I don't know if that's going to end up being very baseball hat looking, but let me try to add a brim and see if that helps. So, any anytime you have something like this, you can, you know, any shape that you need to make, you can actually cut it a little bit with the um, bamboo to make it work so you can you can actually kind of almost draw and press into it at the same time so i'm going to try to do that and then stretch it out to make more of a brim for the hat there we go and again always have to attach it it doesn't look exactly like a baseball hat but i think i'll live with it for now whoops So, but, and then, you know, again, then I can add things like I can roll out a shirt collar and put the shirt collar on, but I think, you know, I'll flatten it out a little bit and put that around. So then he would have a collar for his shirt and, you know, you just keep adding whatever details you want to add for your person. For now, I'm just going to stop there and that will be my friend about to tell his story. And because of the fact that there were a bunch of us listening, and again, you could go back in and add details to the hands and everything else. You can take these little pieces, you know, the piece that you had left and cut them smaller. And then your, your little listeners, you wanna make the listeners smaller because the storyteller is the important person in this narrative art. So because of that, I'm going to have a smaller egg shape that I'm going to start my, my listener. All right, so again, flatten it out a bit. This one I could go a little bit thinner than the other one. And again, just cut your feet, cut your arms, cut your shoulders, shape your head. Shape your shoulders, shape your arms, get the legs going. So it's really just a matter of getting your basic shape and then just refining, cleaning it up, making it smooth, working on it. You know, decide, are they going to be in the same position? You know, is this one, is this one sitting on the lap, sitting at the feet, you know, um, sitting at the other lap? leaning over the shoulder, standing next to. So you can position the other little person any way you want, but the listener should be, you know, somewhere. The listener's mouth should be closed, okay? Because they're listening. They're, you can make exaggerated ears if you want. Uh, the eyes could be wide open, but the mouth should be closed when you make it because they're listening, not talking, all right? Whoops. So that's it for now. Um, you should be able to make that pretty simply and just add the more details you make, the more you make it, um, a little bit of an homage to the person that you're thinking about. If you, if you can really make it look like them, fabulous. It's a little difficult with something this small and with this, you know, with the particular tools we have and the clay, 
Um, but the idea here is that the P 